You know, uh, I don't know if you remember this. It was a it was a shop in Hollywood called Red Fox Beauty Shop. I remember Red Fox? Mm-hmm. And I used to hang there all the time. It's like 75, 76. Mm-hmm. And uh, you used to always look at Red Fox as a junk man. <laughs> and so when I was out in the back there, a part of mine used to work there and cut hair there. I was out of Fresno. And uh, Rex Fox pulled up and he had a red suit on, white shirt. And his jewelry on. And a fine Chinese girl with him. I'm sitting back just checking him out, you know. I said, that ain't the Red Fox I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so Red Fox was in the limelight himself, you know, behind the comedy, you know. So we used to kick it up there all the time. And then I had another friend of mine named, uh, used to book entertainment named, uh, they called it Bill Wynn Production. You ever heard of that? Uh-huh. Bill Wynn Production used to book entertainment all over with all the movie stars, Sly Stone, Bobby Womack, Dramatics. Um, everybody went through there because he was the uh, the man, you know. Mm-hmm. And he stayed up in a in a house in Beverly Hills. And we used to walk out on the balcony and look down, and that's where the Sharon Tate murders had happened, you know, mm-hmm. right up under him, you know. Mm-hmm. So I had a lot of friends that was doing real well back there. And uh, at that time, you know, driving convertible Rolls Royces. And, you know, we was at the thing where we was just driving new Cadillacs. That was the thing yeah. for all of us, you know. Mm-hmm. But these dudes here was hitting them tough, you know. <laughs> had the long houses with the swimming pools. And, you know, so I used to really admire that stuff there, you know. And uh, But, uh, yeah, a lot of entertainers used to be up there, Sly Stone and all of them, you know. I used to be up there with them, you know. And uh, Billy was uh, had control of the whole nation because they had a thing come out called the Rich Man's High. You remember that, right? Mm -hmm. That was the cocaine when everybody was blowing. Mm -hmm. And uh, during that time, right before that, that's when I had Natalie Cole. And right after I shook her, everybody, you know, Chaka Khan and all them, you know, they was doing their thing. Sounds and also, like yeah, and also, you know, and then I used to have uh, this bro, this is gonna fascinate you right here. Uh, George Foreman. You know, I knew, uh, well, I used to have his old lady, you know. Mm. And uh, George Foreman had had a fight with Muhammad Ali. And because I used to ride through Hollywood, Muhammad Ali used to like my car. And he had a convertible Rolls Royce. He used to ride down Sunset doing two miles an hour. And you know what that is to ride down Sunset at that time. Yeah. And he'd ride through and I'd ride through. You know, we'd stop and chop it up, you know, because I had a brand new Seville, but he had a convertible Rolls Royce, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and but uh, make a long story short, they had, had to fight. But uh, George Foreman had retired after that, after, you know, him and Muhammad Ali. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, Pam was, uh, her name was Pam, but they called her Patricia, you know. And she had a baby by George Foreman. I always, she always claimed to be his wife, but she wasn't his wife. She was his, his, his yeah. And uh, Pam loved me to death. And she would not let nothing happen to me on no level, you know. Because you had a lot of broad play dirty game back yeah, then, you yeah. know, because that cocaine had them going, you know. <laughs> and, uh, she would see them bros, man. She said, Virgil, leave her alone. She wouldn't tell me why. But I had that sixth sense, and I seen it anyway, like that discernment. You know, I saw she wasn't no good, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Pam wanted me. She said, Virgil, George is coming back. You need to get, take George. You know, he got a lot of sons named George, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, all of them. Yeah, like yeah. five of them. So I, I know one of them personally because I used to be there at the parents' house, you know. She said, Take the son, you know, get up under George, because George is coming back. Well, George been down so long, I mean, I don't know whether to stay or go, you know. <laughs> and I've I'm, I'm, got big money at the time, you know, so I, I mean, I'm not really looking for nothing, you know, extra, you know. <laughs> yeah. And after about a couple months, I had left and went out of the country, you know, and Pam had cancer. And she ended up dying, man. And uh, she had told me all this stuff before she died to get up under George Foreman because get with him, y'all going to be all right. Mm-hmm. 
I didn't even make the move and look what George is just now. George, I'm sorry, George. I wish y'all to come found you, man. But she tried to get me to come do it, you know. But we'd have been all right. But we're still going to be all right one day when I see you. Because I'm going to tell you some stories. <laughs> but, yeah, that's kind of one of the little things that I experienced, you know. But I had to, I experienced a lot of entertainment, you know. Like I said, I went to school with the Whispers, man. And, and uh, the traumatics, the barcades, I come through. Because I used to knock a lot of brawls back then, you know. And uh, a lot of them be fine and everything. So they hook up with all these entertainment. They was in love with me. You know, they like my style, you know. So they turned me on to a lot of that stuff, you know. Like I said, I used to be at the Circle Star back uh, in the dress room with Natalie Cole. We was kicking it, you know. And, um, man, it just, it was just, it ain't never be no days like it was before. 